Live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Central Europe. I hope everybody is having a great Friday so far and is looking forward to a fantastic weekend. We are going to study the reading section in today's class. We're going to talk a little bit about how to get a band nine and take the right strategies uh, to do so. Welcome, Joseph. Welcome, members. Hi, Amanda. Hi, Bashanth. Akaraiwe, Hope, Surya, Anna, nice to see many of you. Uh, here we go, students. This lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Definitely check us out there. For the general IELTS, visit us at gieltshelp.com. On both of our websites, we have lots and lots of materials to help you, including practice exams we'll be using uh, one of those reading passages today, and you can use the code Cyber Day to get a 40% discount. This is the best discount code of the year. It's used for uh, the Cyber Monday discounts, so make sure to do that. Um, I'll show you the websites. This is aehelp.com right here with the blue background. You can click that big red button to join. When you click that big red button, you'll see another button that says use code or use coupon code. And then you can use this Cyber Day and it will give you a 40% discount. You'll see the change in the price. Hi, Rajika. Hi, Nick Hill. Lots more members joining in. I can see that. Uh, General IELTS, it's the green background. Red button again, use the code CYBERDAY, you'll save 40%. It's a one-time payment, lifetime access for videos, practice exams, interactive courses, mobile phone app. We are one of the world leaders when it comes to online IELTS preparation, so it's well worth your investment. Okay, everyone, again, reading right now. Uh, if you have questions, send me an email, adrian at aehelp. Uh, dot com and I will gladly respond to your inquiries. You can get our books from Amazon and tomorrow uh, we'll have some speaking part two, speaking part three classes. So make sure to join us for that. Let's get into reading. Here we go. All right. So you are in your IELTS uh, exam, whether it's the paper based or the computer-based, the reading is very synonymous, so very, very similar. Uh, you will have three passages in the academic IELTS, and in the general IELTS, you'll have three sections with five passages. So section one, section two of general IELTS has uh, two shorter readings each, and then uh, for section three, you have a longer passage, just like in the academic IELTS. So. Uh, it's good to pay attention to this class. This class is using an academic IELTS reading passage, but hey, if you can do a good job with this, you can definitely do a good job on your general IELTS reading. Harpreet, I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for asking. Okay, so uh, you should always start by reading the titles and then looking at the pictures, if you have a picture. You don't always have a picture, but Sometimes you do, and that's nice because that will help you, okay? Uh, one quick tip, students, uh, just keep this in mind. The IELTS is what's called a progressive test. So that means that each section gets more and more difficult, okay? So technically speaking, reading passage one should be easier than reading passage two or reading passage three, but that's not always true, okay? So why not? Technically, passage one should be easier than passage two, and passage two should be easier than passage three. However, this isn't always true. Why is that? Why isn't that always true. Okay, why, why do I ask this? So, but this is not always true because, anybody have an idea? It depends on you, okay? So, um, 
it might not be true because you might be more familiar uh, with uh, the topic of passage two or passage three, okay? Uh, you might get lucky and maybe the topic of passage three is your major. So maybe your major is engineering and passage three is uh, a topic that's about engineering, okay? So yeah, Sundar, very good. It varies from person to person. It depends on what you know. Uh, maybe passage three is about math and that's your thing. You love math, okay? But this is not always true because it also depends on your knowledge. So a good tip, okay, is always look at all three of the titles and start with the one that is the most familiar for you, okay? If none of them are, then of course start with passage one, all right? But if you're into astronomy and you love looking at the stars, you might want to start with this one, okay? Uh, this is passage three uh, coming from our exam book. This is our second exam. Uh, this is passage three, so it is a bit more challenging, but hey, if you're into space in the universe, maybe it's not so bad. Uh, here we go. Let's read the title. So you always read the title, Explosions in Space, Supernovae. Okay. And if you have a picture, you look at that. Uh, and then you have to think, what is that? So what are explosions in space? What is a supernovae? And you have to think about, do I know anything about this? Have I seen any movies about this? Do I remember anything in school about this topic? Looking at the picture, does that help me? Okay. So Corkum says, yeah, sometimes I find the first passage difficult. Yeah. Indeed, Vivek, it is live. Thank you for concurring. Yeah, so uh, when I look at this topic and I go, okay, so supernovae, explosions in space, what comes to mind? So what is a supernovae? If you don't know, guess. Okay. If you, somebody said you can win a million dollars if you guess correctly, you'll guess. So guess. Okay. Fennel, welcome to our group of members. Send me an email so I can hook you up with those videos and such, okay? So I look forward to your email, Fennel. Okay, so Surya says it's science. <laughs> Amar Khan says it's a star goes boom. <laughs> I like it. Joseph says death of a star. Amar, that is clever and funny. So Amar says a star goes boom. <laughs> yeah. Um, very nice. Okay, Joseph says the death of a star. All right. Very nice. Why does that happen? So think critically. Why does this happen? Why does a star die? So why does that happen? Why does it die? Alex says the stars collide. Maybe. Uh, Jainil, a galaxy is much bigger. Galaxies have millions of stars, right? So uh, hopefully that doesn't happen. So uh, stars collide, maybe. Okay, we don't, just guess, right? Harpreet says because of the reaction of gases, very good, because of the reaction of gases. Okay, that, yeah, that's a good idea. Joseph says they run out of fuel. Lumna says they heat up. Yeah. Okay. Alex says they get old and die. Alex Joseph says age limit. They get old. They get wrinkly and die. Okay. Yeah, so that's that's uh, that's some good thinking. Okay. Jehovah says they get retired from the galaxy. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, sure. So those are some good thoughts. Uh, all right. Now we're on the right track. So uh, we look at this picture too. So... When we look at the picture, we think about supernovae, we think about the star dying, we look at this picture, think simple, what comes to mind? So when you look at this picture, what kind of an idea do you think of when you think of a supernova and um, a star 
dying. Joseph Paul says some gravitational problem could be too. Fazley, thank you. I appreciate your feedback. Okay, so... Yeah, okay, so Kushal says it's a huge explosion. Amar says it's art. Uh, Samina says make a wish. Laugh out loud. Why not, Amina? Uh, Samina? That's not so funny. Yasmin, it's, it, I think it's okay to say that. Make a wish. Sure, because there's an idea there, right? We see the star moving. Uh, Saman says Big Bang. I think that's the universe, not just a star. Okay. Uh, Salman says light energy. Dupery. Yeah, absolutely. So when I look at this picture, clearly it's very bright, right? So bright, big, bright, light, big explosion. Okay, yeah, pictures contain a lot of information, so they're good to look at. Okay, next step, we look at the questions. Because the questions might help us to understand the passage a little bit more, okay? Yeah, so Rithwick, yeah, flash, right? A big sudden flash, okay, big light, all right? Okay, cool. So here we have a paragraph contains the following information. So this is matching information to the paragraph. It is impossible, virtually impossible, to just skim read for this type of question. So don't even try it. Okay. Um, but all of this information is somewhere in the passage. Uh, so it's good to read it. It gives you a better idea of what you will read about. So mass energy conversion. Think about paraphrasing, so changing or transforming power or transforming energy. The requirements for a type 1A supernova, so what is needed for this kind of supernova. Supernovae as an intergalactic measuring stick, so supernovae used as some kind of measurement in the universe. Heavy elements come from supernovae, okay? The fuel used for stars, supernovae, are the progenitors of much of existence. Mm, okay, so uh, now I know that uh, we're going to have maybe a discussion of some different kinds of supernova, because it says type 1A. I know that we're going to have some kind of discussion of how supernova are used in science and astronomy, okay? Uh, which is good. Um, now I know that there's some kind of elements like um, hydrogen or helium or something that's connected to supernovae. Okay. And then I move on. When you're reviewing the questions, you should do this quite fast. Uh, you want to have at least 10 minutes for reading and at least seven, eight minutes for answering questions. Okay. Seven, eight minutes for answering questions. So here we go. Uh, this one is short answers or fill in the blanks. And it says no more than two words. Okay, good. So let's just read these. It's all in the passage, so it's a good idea to read it before the passage. Type 2. Okay, so there's type 1, there's type 2. So definitely a couple of types of supernovae originate from a star which is... Okay, I could probably guess that answer. The energy-producing process in a star converts something into something. So that, so that will probably be some kind of a chemical or molecule or something. Uh, the death process starts when all the hydrogen is used up. The star then begins to process something elements. The first element that can no longer be fused into another element is, okay, so I'm going to be reading a bit of chemistry here for sure. Hopefully I read a little bit of chemistry before the IELTS exam in a high school textbook or on the internet about basic chemistry of hydrogen, helium, and so on. Uh, number 37, multiple choice. Multiple choice, I only read the question. I do not read the answers because the answers are confusing. So just this, the sun will not become a type 1a supernova. Why not? The Chandra Sekar limit is... If two type 1a supernovae are observed and one is brighter than the other, what can be concluded about the dimmer one? And supernovae can be compared to. Okay, and again, here I only read the questions, not the answers for multiple choice because 
The answer is there's a lot of false, unnecessary information. Okay. All right. Um, so now I have a better idea about the passage, about the information I'm going to read. So I go back to the passage and read it. Now, students, ideally, in a perfect world, you are reading the passage. Okay? Just skim reading the passage, especially for passage three, is not much better than a guessing game. You can almost just take wild guesses at the questions and get about the same number correct. Okay? So, it's a really good idea to read the passage. So hopefully you still have 20 minutes for passage three. You have 10 minutes to read the passage. If you don't understand every word, that's totally okay. Okay, hopefully you understand about 70%. If you're just skimming and scanning, you're gonna have a lot of trouble on a passage like this. Okay, so keep that in mind. It's not an effective strategy here. There's way too much paraphrasing and there's way too many question types that are not clearly from any one word, okay? So you can't match up words here, okay? All right, so here we go. Uh, let's read, and we'll work through this together, and I'll show you some tips and strategies as we go, okay? All right, so let's start with paragraph A. So here we go. A is the introduction, okay? This is like an essay, so this is going to introduce to me the topic of this essay, the main points of this essay, and why I'm reading this essay. Okay, here we go. Uh, supernovae, and again, this is reading, so read with me. Okay, let's read together. I'm not just reading for you. If you're just listening, then it's no different than a listening exercise. So read with me, okay? So supernovae are among the most spectacular events in the universe. They are incredibly powerful. In just a few weeks, they can release the same amount of energy as our sun will release in its entire lifetime. Supernovae are also the origin of many of the elements that make up the universe. Most of the elements of the periodic table require enormous amounts of energy to produce, and supernovae are the only source of this energy. Due to their consistent brightness, supernovae are used to measure large distances across the universe. What am I reading about? I'm reading about supernovae, one of the most incredible events that take place in the universe. Why am I reading about this? Because they are the source of most of the different types of molecules that we see uh, in the universe or elements, okay? They can also be used as measuring sticks. So that's why I'm reading about this. And I know that I'm going to read about their energy release, their lifespan. I know that I'm going to read about the elements that they produce and use. And I'm going to read about how they are used to measure distances in the universe. Okay, that's all in there for me. So I get all of that information from this paragraph A, the introduction. Okay. All right. At this time, I'm also visualizing. So I see myself looking up at the stars and I see that shooting star that I'm making a wish on. I can't remember who it was, but somebody says, I, I think about a shooting star making a wish. Why not? So picture it. You're out there, you're laying on your back, you're looking at the night sky and whoosh, there goes a shooting star, which is probably a meteor. It's not a dying star. But anyway, think about that. It'll help you visualize, okay? All right, um, so here we go with paragraph B. Keep reading with me. There are two major types of supernovae, type 1A and type 2. There are a number of differences between the two, but the main difference is the process by which they come into being. Type 2 supernovae originate from a dying star. A star begins to die when it runs out of fuel. Fuel for stars is the element hydrogen. For their entire lives, stars fuse hydrogen into helium, producing energy in the process. This energy comes from the difference in mass between a helium molecule and the four constituent hydrogen atoms. Four hydrogen atoms have a mass of approximately 4.0318 atomic mass units, while a helium atom's mass is approximately 4.0026 atomic mass units. 
The difference between these two values is the amount of mass which is converted into pure energy. In a dying star, there is no more hydrogen. All that is left is helium. At that point, the star begins to fuse helium molecules together to form carbon molecules. Once all the carbon is gone, the star moves on to even heavier elements. And the star consumes these heavier elements at faster and faster rates. A star may take 10 million years to consume its hydrogen, then take a million years to consume its helium, a thousand years for the carbon, three years to consume the neon, three months for the oxygen, and only five days to convert all of the silicon into iron. There is a stopping point, however. Once the core of the star is entirely iron, there can be no more fusion. This is because the small difference in mass that is converted into energy is not present in the case of iron. The star is then left with an inactive iron core. Once the iron core reaches a certain mass, called the Chandrasekhar limit, the star can no longer exist under its own weight and it collapses in on itself. The result is a cataclysmic type 2 supernova. So again, I don't just keep reading super fast. I'm always reading actively. This means that uh, I'm always visualizing, so I'm picturing, and I'm thinking, what am I reading about? So students, what did we read about in this paragraph? Al Farabi, here's a good advice for you to think about when you're doing your reading tomorrow. This is really important. When you read a paragraph for just a split second, so it's just for a quick two, three seconds, stop and think, what did I just read? Okay, let your brain process the information. So Owen says it's the process or the procedure of the consumption of ele uh, elements in a supernova. Yeah, in a type 2 supernova. Okay. Fennel says it's the characteristics and properties of a dying star. Right. Mostly. Right. Try to be specific. Okay. Vivek says how a star converts energy and becomes supernova. Yeah. Yeah. So if I wanted to give an accurate and clear, so what is paragraph B about? Be accurate and concise. Okay, concise means say it in a short way. So my answer here is, it is about the way a star um, converts elements into energy. and becomes a, a type to supernova, okay? So that would be my most accurate and most specific uh, way to summarize that. It's about the way a star converts elements into energy and becomes a type to supernova. Does everybody see that? Okay, so it's very, very valuable to stop for a second and think about what you just read, okay, tip. And this is very important, okay? Let me, very important to stop for three seconds after a, after reading a paragraph and think about what it contains accurately and concisely. Okay, it's very valuable, all right? Okay, so let's keep going. Here we go. Um, C, the other type of supernova is the type 1A. Okay, so B was about type 2. Uh, now we're reading about type 3. Okay, good, all right? Uh, so type 1A. <laughs> So the other type of supernova is type 1A. The type 1A supernovae are formed most commonly in binary star systems where there are two stars which rotate around a common point. Okay, so here in my brain I make a note. So type 1 needs two stars 
and type two needs one star, which is kind of interesting, right? That they would call the first one a type um, two, and it only takes one star. And then they would call the other one a type 1A, and the type 1A actually needs two stars. I keep that in mind, okay? So I lock that into my mind. All right. For a supernova type 1A to occur, one of the stars has to be a white dwarf. A white dwarf is the remnant of a low-mass star that has come to the end of its stellar life. Our sun will one day be a white dwarf because it lacks the mass needed to blow up in a supernova type 2 explosion. In a binary system, the white dwarf star's gravitationally attracts matter from its companion star, with the matter taken from the companion star becoming part of the white dwarf. Eventually, the white dwarf will have added so much mass that it begins to approach the Chandrasekhar limit. Once it hits this limit, just like in type 2 explosions, the white dwarf can no longer sustain itself and the core of the star collapses. The star blows itself up in an even more spectacular event than the type 2 explosion. Okay, so again... Uh, what am I reading? I'm reading about a type 1A supernova. It's a different type, right? That's what I'm reading about. And I'm visualizing this. So hopefully many of you saw this as well, that basically what happens is you have a star, okay? Um, and uh, it becomes a white dwarf. So it's this small little, small quote unquote, uh, star that's really dense, but it's not dense enough, not heavy enough to explode. Now, there's another star here, and this one is sucking away the material from this star, adding it to its mass, okay? And eventually, it becomes big enough that it explodes into an even bigger explosion, which is a type 1 a supernova, okay? Did everybody visualize that while we were reading that? Okay, Hind, Al Sherry, did you see that? Yeah? Okay, so everybody saw that event being described? Good, All right? Nick Hill says, yeah, I got that, okay? But for this to work, we need two stars, one, two, right? That are close enough to each other that this one can vacuum or suck away the particles of the other star. Okay. All right, good. So we've gotten the introduction to supernovae. We understood how the they work for the type 2 and then the type 1a. Okay, let's see what else happens. Here we go with paragraph D. Okay. Muhmadiso, hi, please don't spam. Okay, here we go. Uh, D, type 1A supernovae are extremely bright. If the sun were to be replaced by a type 1A supernova, it would appear 5 billion times brighter. Whoa. This brightness is also very consistent from one supernova type 1A to another supernova type 1A. This consistency has led astronomers to use supernovae type 1A as what are called standard candles. A standard candle is used to determine how far away an object is. For example, if we observe a supernova type 1A in a nearby galaxy, we can tell very accurately how far away it is by comparing the apparent brightness of the supernovae observed with its absolute brightness. Respectively, if the supernova is very bright, the galaxy is quite close. If the supernova is very dim, the galaxy is far away. Okay. So, what is this paragraph about? <clears throat> so, what are, we, what are we reading here? 
Yarabisha, supernova is one and supernovae is plural. Okay? It's like goose and geese or mouse and mice. Okay? So supernova, one, supernovae, multiple supernova. Okay? Okay, so Ois says it's the feature and the brightness of a type 1A. Yeah, Lubna says it's using the type 1A as measuring sticks. Absolutely, as measurements. That's right. Okay. Uh, Surya, very good. So Surya says it's the distance in the galaxy calculated by the light of type 1A supernova. Yeah, very good. Fennel, the application of supernova type 1A as measurements. Okay. Very, very nice. Okay. All right, good. So many of you are getting the idea now, which is fantastic. Okay. All right. Here we go with E. Not much to go. Hang in there. Here we go. E, supernovae are responsible for every element in the universe that is heavier than iron. Every atom of gold, silver, tin, and lead, as well as 80 other elements in the universe, was born in a supernova. Supernovae are also the origin of most newly born stars in the universe. Our sun, for example, was born from a cloud of dust and gas that was left over from a supernova. The earth, likewise, was born from a supernova. It is not too imaginative, therefore, to regard the planets, animals, and humans on this planet as a development of this supernova. Every atom of our bodies was once scattered in a supernova explosion. Therefore, many scientists believe that supernova or supernovae are the crucibles of existence itself. Okay. So this last paragraph talks about how supernovae are responsible for many of the elements, especially heavy elements like gold, and much of existence in the universe. Yeah, shaman, uh, supernovae is plural. That's right. Okay. Okay, great. So let's answer these questions. So now that I have a clear understanding, I stopped after each paragraph and thought about it. Now, uh, I can answer a lot of these questions. So I come back to my questions here and it says, which paragraph contains the following information? So we have paragraphs A, B, C, D, and E. Okay, so we have five paragraphs basically here and we have to figure these out. Uh, number 27, mass energy conversion. So which paragraph tells me about converting mass into energy? Okay, Ahmed says the first one is B. Does everybody agree with Ahmed? Ahmed? Mass energy conversion. Yarabisha says B. Sieda says B. Okay, Ahmed. Many of people agree with you. I agree with you, right? So here it is. B, yeah. So that paragraph talks about converting uh, hydrogen into helium. The extra uh, mass is converted into pure energy, right? And then uh, helium uh, gets converted into neon. Neon gets converted into silicon, silicon into iron, something like that, right? Yeah, so 27 is B. I don't need to search, okay? Here's an interesting tip, students. When you do a good job in reading and you understand most of what you read or much of what you read, you don't need to search the passage because the answer is already in your head. Okay? All right. Uh, 28, the requirements for a type 1A supernova. So I remember this one too. I don't need to search for this. So some of you are saying D. I don't think it's D. Dirabisha says, I think it's C. Uh, first uh, paragraph was an introduction about supernova, what they are, why they're important. Second paragraph was about converting mass energy and the type to supernova. And the third paragraph, I don't remember them as A, B, C, D, E. I just remember them as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. 
The third paragraph was about type 1A supernova where you need two stars. Remember I even drew that picture? So I drew the picture of the smaller, heavy dwarf star sucking away uh, the energy from its kind of brother or sister star. I drew that picture. That picture is still in my head. So uh, I know that that's C. I don't need to search for it. I remember that. <clears throat> that was the third paragraph. Okay. Why? Because I have an order of information in my head. So I have the structure. And why do I have that structure? Because after each paragraph, I thought about what the paragraph is about. Okay. If I'm not sure, I can go back and check, but that takes time and I don't need to check because I'm sure about this one. Okay, uh, number 29, supernovae as intergalactic measuring sticks. So using supernovae to measure distances in the universe. I know this one too. Um, which, was, which one was this one? So knowing how far away a galaxy is from the Earth by looking at the brightness of the supernovae. Very good, Stuti. Very good, Alex. Yeah, that was D, right? So B, C, D. So far, so good. Okay. Um, number 30, heavy elements come from supernovae. So that was uh, gold, silver. It's definitely not S, Saman, because we only have A, B, C, D, E. So this one was E, yeah. So B, C, D, E. We have a nice order here. Okay. Um, 31, the fuel used for stars. Again, that one I remember. So number 31, what was the fuel used for stars? What was it? Uh, here, I try to think about what was the fuel used for stars? What is this fuel? Hmm? What was the fuel used for stars? Can anybody tell me the actual fuel? Not the letter, but the fuel. What do we use to power the star? What powers the star? Okay, fennel, very good. So yeah, Yarabisha, very good. Nikhil, good. Hydrogen, yeah. Ahmed, very good. Harpreet, Raghav, yeah, hydrogen. Okay, which paragraph was talking about hydrogen? Okay, which, which paragraph talked about hydrogen and helium? Which was that? It's easy now. It should be easy. Okay, good. So you have that. So which paragraph? A, B, C, D, or E? Fennel says B. Salman agrees. Many of you agree now, yeah. So B. All right. Pay careful attention to this instruction here. You may use any letter more than once. Okay. And there's a very good chance when you have five paragraphs that you're going to use some of these letters more than once. So B, C, D, E, and back to B. Okay. That was B. Remember, B was talking about type 2 supernovae and how hydrogen is converted into helium and so on. Number 32, supernovae are the progenitors of much of existence. Okay. Uh, which one was that? Okay. So supernovae create much of what is existence here. Lubna, very good. Stuti, very good. That was the conclusion, right? I remember just thinking that. So that's E. So it's B, C, D, E, B, and E. Okay. So back to E. Uh, A is not used in this case. Okay, but we have two B's and two E's. So think carefully, think critically. This question is much, much easier if you understand what each paragraph is about. Okay, so definitely stop after the end of each paragraph and think about what did I just read. Okay, thank you, Raghav. I appreciate that. Yeah, we have got thousands and thousands of students who have used our strategies to succeed on the IELTS. Okay, so... Uh, we're a team of um, teachers and psychologists. So our strategies aren't just weird little tricks or tips, but they're actually effective information processing strategies that we're using here. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, so let's keep going here.
Somebody said that they still think 28 should be D. Uh, no, definitely not. See, D is about how they're, just want to show you so nobody's confused here. D is about they're extremely bright, okay, and they're used as uh, standard candles, measuring sticks, okay. Um, C is about what's needed for a type 1A supernova. Type 1A supernovae are formed most commonly in binary star systems, okay? All right. Okay, um, so here we go with the other questions. Let's see if we can figure some of these out. Okay, no more than two words. That's always a hint that you'll likely need at least two words for some of these. Okay, all right, um, here we go. So number 33, uh, uh, type 2 supernovae originate from a star which is, and it's a verb here, and it should be fairly easy. Someone says dying. Uh, and some others say dying as well. Yeah, a star which is dying, absolutely. Okay, it's at the end of its life. That's a type 2 supernovae, star which is dying. Sure. Um, okay, here we go. The energy producing process in a star converts something into something. So what is converted into what? as the first step, the energy producing process. This is what our sun is doing. Hydrogen into helium, very good, yeah. Converts hydrogen into helium. Now, IELTS will accept the chemical uh, abbreviations like this, okay? If you know the abbreviations for hydrogen and helium, you can use that, but if you don't, please don't try because worst case scenario, you can just check. Since you got these answers correct, you know that this is coming from paragraph B. So it's very easy for you at this point to go back and look for the right spelling, okay? So here's type two originate from a dying star, okay? Fuel for stars is hydrogen, there's your spelling, okay? hydrogen into helium. So there's your spelling for those, all right? So don't overthink it, okay? All right. Okay, let's keep going. So the death process starts when all of the hydrogen is used up. So no more hydrogen. The star then begins to process something elements. So what does it process? Okay. Uh, Hin, the elements don't need to be capitalized. They're considered common nouns in English, right? So you don't need to capitalize it unless you're writing the chemical abbreviation. Then that's different, okay? Okay, Anna, you're writing heavy, but this is relative, okay? The star then begins to process, it's relative to hydrogen, so heavy, you have to be careful about that. It's not necessarily heavy because helium, Anna, is not heavy or carbon is not heavy, it's just heavier, okay? So the star then begins to process heavier, okay? Okay, and if you're not sure, not sure about the spelling, not sure about this, then you can go back. You know it's coming from the same paragraph. You know it's still from paragraph two. So this is what's nice about knowing where to look, okay? All right. So here we go. Once all the carbon is gone, the star moves on to even heavier elements and the star consumes these heavier elements so it's there so you can check especially if you have time okay so you have to use heavier uh, they will probably not give you the score for just heavy heavy elements it's heavier elements okay the first element that can no longer be fused into another element is, what is it? That was kind of, that was quite clear. I thought that was quite simple to imagine. 
um, because I was like, ooh, it's solid. It's not doing nothing. It's a solid chunk of or a solid piece of what? What is it? Solid piece of giant, giant, solid piece of something that's just massive. Uh, Lorenz, CC, very good. Iron, it's a giant chunk of iron. Okay. So iron it is. Very good. All right, nicely done. Okay, not many questions to go now. We just got those multiple choice. Uh, multiple choice questions. All you want to do is think about the answer. Don't look at the choices. Think about the answer, okay? This is a very, very important tip, students. You can really save some marks here. Um, so for multiple choice questions, one of the biggest mistakes, both in the listening and in the reading, is that students are quick to look at the answers, hoping that the answer is going to just pwah, jump out at your face and go, hey, there's the answer. Thanks for coming in today and jumping out at me. Um, okay, but that's not the way that it works, especially not with more challenging exams or part three reading. So uh, do not uh, be too quick to read the choices for multiple choice questions rather uh, read the question carefully think about the answer even if you didn't understand it from the text uh, think about the answer uh, on your own okay so think about the answer on your own and then find the closest match. Okay. It's weird that many students never get taught the right strategies for these types of questions. And teachers should do this when they give you a test with these types of questions. So if you haven't heard it before, you're hearing it now. So um, here, let me just kind of do this. I'm going to bring this right to the bottom here. So question 37 is, the sun will not become a type 1A supernova. Why not? Why? Why? So in your own words, okay, according to your own knowledge from reading this passage, why will our sun not become a type 1A supernova? Why is that? What's the problem? I, th I think I have a pretty good idea. This is from paragraph C of what's needed uh, for a type 1A. Alex Joseph says it's got no companions. Yeah. It's not the small size. It's small size is the reason it will not become a type 2 supernova. It will not become a type 1A supernova because it doesn't have a buddy. Remember type 1? Strangely, the name, remember what I said? The name kind of is weird because it's type 1, but it needs two stars. Okay. So type 1A supernovae need two stars. You need one, and then you need another buddy star that it can just steal all the uh, elements from. Yeah? Everybody remembers that? So my answer is, <laughs> yeah. So Alex Joseph says he doesn't have a good, good little friend. Uh, Lorenz Cece says, because the sun is forever alone. Sad face. Um, yeah, it's not heavy enough to become a type 2 supernova, but it doesn't have a buddy to become a type 1 supernova. So, A, it's not a white dwarf. No, it doesn't make sense. It will never reach the Chandra Sekar limit. That would be a type 2. It does not have a companion star. It doesn't have a buddy. That's the right one. So, C is the correct answer. It's C. Okay, the question is, the sun will not become a type 1A. It's not a type 2. Okay, that's not the question. Then the answer would be different if it were type 2. It's a type 1A. It doesn't have a buddy. Okay. All right, um, number 38. The uh, Chandra Sekar limit. It's a very famous uh, mathematician from India, uh, Chandra Sekar. So, any students should know his name and uh, should know the answer. What is the Chandra Sekar limit? Very, very, very famous mathematician from India. One of the greatest mathematicians of the modern time. So, 
What is that Chandra Sekhar limit? Kamal says it's Chandra Sekhar Azad. Yeah, and what is the what is, what do we call the Chandra Sekhar limit? The limit. Yeah, we got it, Komal. Thanks for sharing the name. What's the limit? So Chandra Sekhar limit is what? It's the limit when a star is so heavy, it's eaten so much food. Yeah, very good, Nick Hill. So Nick Hill says it's the limit at which the star cannot sustain its weight. And then, of course, Nick Hill, it explodes, right? Kaboom. Okay. Now, if you don't know this, you can search for that because it's an easy one, right? So you can search for this name and you'll find it in the text. But again, that's using more time, okay? So A, the mass at which a star will blow up in a supernova. That looks pretty good. The distance, nope. The time between fusing, nope. The distance between two stars, no, it's A. Let's not overthink it. That's A. Okay. Very good. 39. Uh, if two type 1A supernova are observed and one is brighter than the other, what can be concluded about the dimmer one? Well, it can be concluded that it's further away. Uh, B, it's further away. That's a really easy one. I don't even have to think about that. Okay. So it's further away. Why? Because I know that type 1A supernovae, they give off the same amount of light. So if one is dimmer, the only explanation is that it's further away. Okay. It's like two cars with the same headlights, but one is dimmer. So definitely B. Okay. It's further away. The dimmer headlight, if it's the same headlight, it's dimmer because it's further away. All right. Um, supernovae can be compared to uh, the universe's factory, the universe's graveyard, the universe's hospital, the universe's recycling center. I'm going to go with D because the paragraph tells me the sun came from a supernova and then the sun dies and is born again and the elements are created. So it's kind of like a recycling center. So good news, everyone. If you don't recycle your paper, your glass, your metal, hey, our planet might die. We might die. But the good news is it'll all get recycled in the end. No, just kidding. Recycle. We want to survive, right? Okay. Even if our sun doesn't, hopefully we can find another planet to go to. Uh, but until then, let's keep ours clean and safe. And keep yourselves strong and healthy, especially with the crazy difficulties of the world today, everyone. That's how you do a reading um, section, okay? So you understand the passage, you understand the questions, you use logic, you use structure, you stay calm, and you go step by step. Remember, after each paragraph, think about what the paragraph is about. Always take a few seconds. Tomorrow, students will have speaking part two and speaking part three practice and strategy with some original questions. You're very, very welcome, everyone. I saw that many students have exams coming up this weekend. Good luck on your exams. Remember, we've got lots and lots of videos. ahelp.com for academic IELTS, gltshelp.com for general IELTS. Salman is asking, why is that last question not A? Uh, A is close, but D is the better answer. Remember this, students, IELTS, especially for passage three, isn't necessarily looking for a correct answer. It's looking for the best answer. Okay, so Salman, D is a better answer than A. Okay, recycling is better. Okay, all right, everyone, that's it for today. That's it for now. I will be back tomorrow with a couple more classes at the same time. If it's late in your country, get some rest, wake up tomorrow energized for the weekend. Much love to all of you. You're all beautiful, brilliant people. Bye for now. I'm Adrian signing out from Budapest.